Welcome to this exploration of worship. When you hear the word worship, what comes to mind? Is it a song, a hymn, or perhaps a moment of deep reflection? If you're like most people, you probably think of music, singing, and maybe even a live band at church. Music is indeed a powerful form of worship, but it's just one piece of a much larger puzzle. So today, today I want to explore a different perspective on worship from the Bible's perspective, a perspective that goes beyond the melodies and harmonies. Spoiler alert, it's got nothing to do with music. Rarely does the New Testament prescribe that worship or prescribe what worship is, but rather it gives us a description of the New Testament church, how they practiced worship. It's about something deeper, more encompassing. Worship is a powerful word. It carries with it a sense of awe and reverence. It's about devotion, reverence, honoring God as he deserves and requires. It's about our hearts and our lives being aligned with his will. In the New Testament, worship is often described through the practices of the early church. These practices were not limited to just singing, but also included a variety of ways that they uh, embrace to honor God. Yes, Singing hymns and praise songs is a beautiful and significant part of worship, but let's dive deeper into what worship truly is. Because Romans 12.1 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. This is implicit of an inward change, a change of heart, which then changes our daily actions. Worship, worship according to this scripture, involves our everyday actions and attitudes. It's about how we live our lives in service to God and to others. It's about offering our whole selves to God. Every action, every thought, Every moment can be an act of worship. Think about the gathering of the saints. This is not just a social event. It is a sacred assembly. It was the practice of the New Testament church to gather together and participate in rightly dividing the word of truth, exploring and explaining uh, exploring and explaining the truth of Scripture, That is how you edify the body. The act of worship is a direct response to what God already has done for you. The gathering of the saints was an act of worship as we expand our understanding of what God has done for us, who he is, and ultimately then what he requires of us. The assembly. The assembly of the brothers should be marked by understanding and expounding of scriptures, of scriptures, remember it's scriptures. Because sadly, you know, the average house of worship nowadays has been reduced to the to emotional banter and entertaining antics. The content of most congregations are that most congregations are fed is filled with cultural feel good messages rather than scriptural challenges to change. Foundationally, worship requires us to understand the truth and the true nature of God in order to attribute to him the worship he requires and deserves. When we come together as a community to listen to the word of God, pray, share in fellowship, we are worshiping. Our unity, our unity and shared faith amplify our worship. Hebrews 10, 24 tells us, uh, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Here, the act of worship is gathering. Here, the act of gathering itself is seen as an act of worship. Our presence and participation 
matters. The teaching and preaching of the word is the focus of this video. It's through the word that we learn, grow, and are transformed. In Acts 2, 42, it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the breaking bread of uh, with each other. And of course, prayer. Uh, being taught the word of God is a form of worship because it honors God's revelation and deepens our relationship with him. It's a commitment to understanding and living out his truth. Prayer, too, is a vital form of worship. It is our direct line, our direct line of communication with God. Philippians 4, uh, ch chapter 4, verse 6 encourages us. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. When we pray, we acknowledge God's sovereignty and trust in his plan. It's an act of surrender and faith. This in itself is a profound act of worship. It's a moment. It's a moment of connection and intimacy with our creator. So while music is a beautiful and expressive way to worship, it is not the only way. Worship is multifaceted. It's a tapestry of uh, ta tapestry woven from various threads of devotion. It's about how we live our lives, how we gather together, how we learn from scriptures, and how we communicate with God through prayer. Each, each of these elements contributes to a holistic worship experience. Next time you're at church, remember that the entire service is a symphony of worship. Every part plays a role in honoring God. From the songs that we sing to the sermons that we hear and even the conversations that we have with fellow believers, it all rises to God as worship. Every interaction is an opportunity to glorify him. Worship isn't confined to a melody or a song. It's a lifestyle. It's a continuous living expression of our faith. It's every moment we dedicate to honoring God. Whether we are alone or in a crowd, our worship is a testament to our relationship with him. So, so let's broaden our understanding and truly embrace the full spectrum of worship as the Bible teaches. Let's live the lives that are consistent. Let's live lives that are a constant offering to God. And this has been another episode of Justified by Score. I hope you gleaned something from this. And if I have missed something or got something wrong, I am not above correction. And please, I will pay attention to your comments. Let me know where I've gone wrong. Look forward to it. And until next time, Lord willing, of course, peace and grace.